No, no, there is no fire. I will use this fire extinguishers as a tank for a small air compressor. And in order to set them up, apart from the reservoir, of course, I also need a compressor. For that, I will use a 12 volt mini car compressor, which is used for inflating tires. I bought them very cheaply at the local market because they were sold as defective, but let's be honest, new ones are also not that expensive. Maybe I should have bought a new one, but repairing something is a greater pleasure. Oh yeah! Of these three, I will use the middle one, because it is the only one that sounds approximately ok. I will explain the problem with other two a little later in the video. So let's start. To open them is not a problem. A couple of screws and that's it. All three are the same, at least on their stickers. They say they are 12 volt and their maximum pressure is 18 bars. The following video clips will show how it works. It is mostly very simple and for that reason they are not expensive. At least those that are made with, let's call it, bad tolerances. It's a quite a simple design, where we have a DC motor that drives the piston in the cylinder via gears. As the piston moves, we have a small non-return valve and pressure is created. Everything looks fine here, but it was very dirty. Speaking of which, uh, we can mention the other two that are faulty. Uh, one had uh, the plastic gear that was uh, worn out and uh, only the motor was spinning, while on the other one the cylinder cracked, fell apart basically. It is also very important to mention for them not to work for a long time, because they overheat, especially if they do more pressure. After I clean everything, I try to reduce some tolerances by placing the washer, but I quickly realized that this was a bad idea, because the gears were so stiff that I could not turn it at all. So I put everything back to how it was. I just lubricated the whole mechanism first. I use here bearing grease, because I didn't have uh, silicone grease, uh, white grease at the time which is the best for plastic and rubber. Uh, it does not affect them like petroleum based grease does. After putting it together, I tried it now and it seems ok. It now works as it should, making pressure. I tried to block uh, the end of the hose and it's already consuming 4 amps, which is very close to the maximum of my power supply. The next thing was to deal a little with the fire extinguisher. As you can see, it is quite easy to disassemble it, to open it. This one was empty, but I had to blow it out a bit with a compressed air to make it clean. The material from which it is made is aluminium. As you saw at the beginning of video, I have three pieces of fire extinguishers, but I choose this one mainly because of its nozzle. Other had a conical tip, this one has a flat tip with no angle, so I thought it would be easier for me to mount the fitting on it. I didn't have a, such a big thread to cut in, so I tried with the smaller one that I had and tried to force it uh, to screw in, because it's plastic after all, but nothing worked. So I used fire. I have a small kitchen burner and I didn't even have to hold it uh, for a long time and the uh, connector went in perfectly. But I wasn't really prepared, of course, uh, when everything sits down you need to cool the connector. So yeah, a little fail. I got the idea to slowly cool it with the air, but everything went sideways, literally. But I didn't give up, I decided to make it and then I saw that I had a window cleaner on hand 
and with that I cooled everything and decided to test the tank before uh, deciding what to do next like should I cut this part or use another one that I have visually everything seems to be okay so I connected it to the compressor and it was taking pressure okay but on the blowing out part I saw that something was wrong so back to the drawing board I tried unscrewing the fitting and it was even easy but I found a problem as I pushed the hot metal into the plastic a plug eventually formed I easily removed it and before I went to test again I decided to put the teflon tape on the threads of the fitting just in case so that there would be no air leakage the handle creaked a bit but I lubricated with a silicon oil spray and it was ok then test number 2 went without a hitch the tank can be filled through the fitted fitting but since I will use it to blow out the air I have to put something for the intake as, and as you can see I will put a rubber tire valve I measured the thickness of the valve because the hole must be smaller than it for the position I decide on the upper part that is flat so that the valve could sit as well as possible after drilling it is very important to clean the hole uh, thoroughly so that the rubber on it is not damaged during mounting and that it, that it fits as well as possible the valve is inserted from the inside and when I pull uh, I am expecting to hear a pop so I know that, he, that it's set down and that's it it's easy to install and very easy to change if ever needed I need to connect something to it so that I can test everything so the next thing is to fix the end of the hose on compressor an old car valve connector can be reused which is press fit on the hose basically it is easily removed I cut off the damaged part damaged end of the hose put a hose clamp on it and tighten it well I'm lucky because often the hose cannot be repaired it becomes very stiff and breaks now I have everything I need to connect the tank to the compressor I connect my power supply to the compressor and everything seems to work it doesn't leak air anywhere but there is one problem my power supply so called lab bench power supply is not strong enough to fill the tank with more than 3 bars it starts to slow down at 2 bars and then almost stops when it passes 3 bars I'll have to try another power source later for now I'm happy with how this project is going next I'll try to fix a few things so that I have something to connect to it uh, like I will start with this uh, air blow gun my previous repair with the tape didn't work so I decided to punch out the broken part and solder the two parts together since I didn't manage to break it out I didn't want to damage anything so I tried to drill through the broken part and then I realized that top was screwed in before so I decided to do it the same screw it in instead of soldering I cleaned the threads on the main part and tapped the threads on the tubular part and just like that that part was fixed I, I added some teflon tape and changed the rubber seal just in case I have this uh, air blow gun sitting for a long time and for that reason I did clean it inside because it started to oxidize I cleaned top and bottom end and lubricated it with oil for pneumatic tools the only thing I'm still missing is a longer hose 
and I have one that I have saved because I hoped it it can be repaired. It is broken at the end and since I can see that the end is metal I decided to take it apart, cut off the damaged uh, hose and put it back together. In the end I realized that I should have tried to fix something sooner because in a short time fixing I managed to have a little compressor set. Of course testing will follow but this time I'm using a car battery and for about 6.57 amps the compressor fills the tank with 8 bar pressure without any problems. I recently bought a 3D printer but I'm not good at designing and printing on it so I took the opportunity to learn and make legs that will hold everything together and also enable easy separation of the tank from the compressor. The idea is that the tank can be taken anywhere to be used and then refilled so that I have more options such as being able to hold everything horizontally or vertically. I'm still missing a shorter hose and I have some hardware that I can use uh, from the hose that was dog. eaten by a dog. Bad dog. Bad dog. I heated one end of the hose that I had to expand it. The other end fits without problem and everything is fixed with the hose clamps for additional security. And now I have also a shorter hose that is easier to use. A shorter hose will come in handy when I need to be uh, compact or to be easier to transport because it's not the size that matters, it's what you do with it. I also tried with the PC power supply and I had no problems with it, except that you need to pay attention to the thickness of the wire. If it's thinner, at higher amperage, it starts to heat up a lot and the compressor slows down. In the end, I know what everyone is waiting for me. To try it on a dusty computer, but remember, this is a small compressor and it's not realistic to expect any big re results from it. For what it's designed, it's perfect.